Hey, hey guys. guys, welcome back to the Traveling Swiss. If you are new here, my name is Alexis and I am from the US. And I am Louis and I am Swiss. And we make all kinds of content about living, but more specifically about traveling in Switzerland. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to click that subscribe button to stick around. Before we get into the video, I wanted to thank all of you who have purchased our itineraries or yeah. connected with Louis in a one-on-one -on -one consultation. We'll give you more details about what those opportunities are at the end of the video. But wanted to thank you all for your support at the beginning and we love connecting with you. Yeah, I love actually doing all these consultations with everyone. So a, a big thank you to you, to all of you guys. So let's get right into the video. So if you click this video, you already know that the top of Europe pass is not available for the 2023 mm -hmm. season and probably foreseeable into the totally. future. So with that, that means it's going to be more complicated and potentially likely more expensive than ever to visit the Jungfraujoch top of Europe. We've connected with enough of you. We've made enough of these videos and see your guys' comments to know that this is a bucket list item for so many of you and it's a key point on a lot of the itineraries as you're planning them. So this might be a little bit of a disappointment that you might now even need to spend a little bit more money to visit the Jungfraujoch top of Europe. So in this video, we're going to go through first, is it worth it? I know so many of you want to do it. Is it worth it to get enough? Another ticket not have the pass pay a little bit more money we'll go through some pros and cons and then we're going to give you some amazing alternatives that spoiler alert i think in a lot of cases louie and i actually prefer yeah. so let's get right into the video so we're going to go through the pros and cons but we don't want this video to feel overly negative there's a lot of great merits to the yopre off top of europe so i'll let louie start with the pros so yeah there are lots of nice things about the yopre your top of europe to to talk about for me one of the the best thing is that you have different activities it's not just like a peak with a view and then that's it you have different activities like the ice palace that was pretty fun to to go around you have a pretty well done little museum about lint and chocolate you can try taste some chocolate and learn about chocolate there if you are not going to do it in zurich this is a nice way to uh, to do it you have also the possibility to see snow even in the middle of july you you will have snow which is kind of unique i think you will not have this in many places even in the in the alps so if you are coming from a place that doesn't have snow that's uh, that's something i think fun to do there is also in terms of sensation you are at 3400 meters at the Jungfraujoch you have that attitude feeling that is also kind of a novelty and is unique for some people so that's something that is uh, that is really nice around and about the Jungfraujoch so we went through the pros which means now it's time for the cons which is sometimes my specialty I think <laughs> I tell you so the first thing is all in the name it is called the Jungfraujoch top of Europe which sounds <laughs> very cool I will give it to them it is excellent marketing but it is not even the tallest peak that you can visit in Switzerland. Nope. The top of Europe insignia or designation comes from the fact that it is the tallest accessible train station in Europe, which is cool, but a, 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 a little bit niche of a an accolade. A little bit of a stretch. <laughs> Meaning it is an actual train takes you to the top. Yeah. There's places mm -hmm. within Switzerland, a few that a gondola can take you up higher and higher by a margin of a few hundred meters in yeah. certain instances. Mm -hmm. So top of Europe is a little bit of a misnomer. So I just want you to be aware that you're not actually visiting, certainly not the top of Europe, but not yeah. even actually the top of Switzerland. So we'll set the stage there. There is some other negatives with this one as well. This is very, very very touristy you will have extremely yeah. high crowds here if you visit in the summer you will likely need to make a train reservation which of course is no big deal but when you get up there i think you might be even a little bit shocked with how many other people are mm -hmm. doing the same thing that you're doing which can certainly take away from the experience and maybe what i add there is that you will find no swiss <laughs> I, I think i think it's true you can if you are swiss and you you are going off into the top of europe let us know in the comments but it will be just you'll feel like a tourist with a bunch of other tourists in a beautiful place that's for sure but you have other beautiful places around and yeah for, for me you yeah you, you kind of feel like a sheep that uh, activity so because there is such crazy demand to visit the young that means mm -hmm. that the prices are really really high now the prices are already high for a lot of things in Switzerland. I think mm -hmm. with the Jungfraujoch specifically now, the prices get a little bit, they get a little bit out of control in my opinion. Oh, yeah. So so I'll go through the prices now, depending on the different type of pass, whatever that you have. Their prices are um, flexed depending on the seasonality. So if you're going in March, it's cheaper than if you're going in July. The prices here I'm discussing are in the summer since that's when most people do their traveling. I thought it'd be relevant to most of you. So if you don't have any pass and you're just getting a return ticket to the Jungfraujoch and back, it is 200 and 14 francs to visit one mountain that's a 
big ticket. That's the cost almost of a Swiss travel pass for a few days. Mm -hmm. If you have the Swiss travel pass or the Eurail pass, it is 160 francs. So you might notice not much of a discount there. Mm -hmm. If you have the half fare card, that's the better. price is 107 francs. So Which is still... Still expensive. That now means you're paying for the half fare card and now it's an additional mm -hmm. 107 francs to get to the Jungfrau. Yuck. And if you have the Jungfrau pass, which means you already have to buy the Jungfrau region pass and you don't have access to the Jungfrau Yuck within that anymore, you used to previously, and that is a 75 add-on. And then with all of that in the summer, you likely need to reserve <laughs> your seat as well and that's 10 francs in each direction. So these tickets can be super expensive. If you are a family with a couple different people traveling, it's hard to justify in my oh, opinion definitely. 200 plus francs a pop for these tickets that can be a thousand franc day to visit a mountain so <laughs> i <laughs> i just say that very plainly because the tickets um i was a little shocked this year when they got rid of that top of europe pass it mm -hmm. made it more expensive for families because the yeah. option to have cheaper tickets for children was kind of eliminated you have actually for families you used to have the the top of europe pass for 30 francs for children now you have still the the regular pass but you have to have that add-on this 75 francs per children which makes it 100 bucks uh, yeah then it's, for a 200 yeah. kind of percent year over year increase in the price for children <laughs> well done so <laughs> but we are here to, to guide you it's really expensive so that's really my main negative mm -hmm. with the young prey top of europe because that eliminates a lot of the possibilities for a lot of people which is you know unfortunate it becomes i think at the price point where it's inaccessible mm -hmm. for a lot of travelers so that's disappointing but i do want to flag it and the reason we're doing this video is it's not all bad news there's a lot of alternatives yes so we went through the pros and cons we don't want to leave anybody with just a negative video because we're here to help you and not to discourage you we love traveling in switzerland so if you've gotten this far and the jungfrau you feel like you've either been priced out or you just can't kind of justify spending that much to visit the top of a mountain we have a lot of other alternatives for you so depending on what reason you were visiting the jungfrau yeah. for we have a bunch of different alternatives so we'll go through them now i will let louis start because i know he's excited to talk <laughs> about if you were visiting the jungfrau Yacht because you thought it was the tallest mountain or you want to visit the tallest mountain we have a bonus for you we have even taller Options. I have two options for you to get kind of to these altitudes and one is really amazing because it involves also the Matterhorn. A lot of you actually in the consultation are pairing Interlaken and then Zermatt. This is the Matterhorn Glacier Paradise. This is really quite incredible. It's a series of cable cars that go up, that go around the Matterhorn, that go to the Little Matterhorn at 3,883 meters. So that's 400 meters more than the, the top of Europe. This is the, this is the highest cable <laughs> car station in Europe now. Yeah, uh, this is really cool because it has also some elements of uh, multimedia. You have a, a little cinema, you have an ice cave as well. You have that feeling and you, you can see some glaciers. You can see Italy also, actually, it's uh, it's fun. And you can even ski from uh, from there in the summer at a price that is much, much more affordable in a way. I think with a half air card, it will be around 50 francs. So this is really it depends also on the season, but it is much more reasonable than the 105 or, or plus francs for the top of Europe. The other option that uh, we did I think recently is in France right next to Geneva but also a really cool uh, activity right. So the Aiguille du Midi is in Chamonix which is about an hour from Geneva. It's a really easy day trip. The Aiguille du Midi is a great option for you if like what Louis said about Glacier Paradise the reason you wanted to visit the top of Europe was for the altitude because it is over 3,800 meters so you will really get that high altitude yeah. feeling. You will get that kind of unobstructed vista of yeah. all of the mountains it is really really yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. you have some cool interactive elements as well there's a little museum and you can ski from there if you're a mm -hmm. really professional skier and there's something really nice where there's an elevator that goes up to a point and you have a glass floor where you can kind of mm -hmm. feel like you're floating a little bit so there's more to it than just the view but the the view and the altitude i think is the reason that you would be visiting the Aigui du Midi. for pricing it costs 73 euros as a round trip ticket it is not on any of the swiss passes because it is in france but the equivalent would be the just round trip to the Jungfraujoch top of Europe, which is 215. So it is much, much cheaper. I know this isn't technically in Switzerland, but we did want to mention it because yeah, if you're close. interested in altitude, you get another 400 meters here, mm -hmm. like the Glacier Paradise as well. So for the next section, if the reason you were so excited about the top of Europe were all these activities they have, they have the Lint Chocolate Museum, they have a glacier viewing point, they have an ice cave. There's lots of stuff mm -hmm. to do up there other than just hiking, because I know not everyone here that watches the channel, myself included, is a hiker. So if the reason you were going 
going was all of these cool, <laughs> all of these cool activities. We have two really great options for you actually that are really close by. The one that I really recommend is the Grindelwald Fiest. This is the most well-rounded peak and activity in the region, maybe even in Switzerland too. For, for me, you have that gondola that takes you to a beautiful place and you can just be there at the peak and, uh, and see all the mountains. You have the cliff walk that is one first activity that is, uh, that is cool and distinguish itself from other peaks. And then you have also a really nice hike and you are a hiker because we've done this. It takes like- I did a, it while I was pregnant. Yeah, uh, <laughs> an hour to get there. Uh, and you have that beautiful lake. It's kind of an infinity pool uh, that, uh, that lake really, really nice. So you have also the hiking possibilities. And then what makes it really unique and especially on the activity side is that you have four main activities. You have two kind of zip line activities that, uh, that you can do from the top of the Fiesta from one of the intermediary station. Then you have the mountain cart that is also a really cool activity for the families or as adults uh, uh, as well. And then you have a mountain scooter that you can scoot down the mountain all the way to the to the bottom of the mountain in Grindelwald. So for me, this is really a fun one to choose. And this is included in the Berner Oberland Pass or the Jungfrau Travel Pass as well. So in these passes, the nice thing is that you'll pay for a pass for 150 francs or something. Uh, some It depends on the number of days. And then you'll have access to this one, but also lots of others rather than having to pay a lot for one uh, experience. Another one in the region that is not in some of these passes will have uh, a pretty steep discount was the Swiss Trial Pass and uh, half that card is the Schildhorn. This is from Muren. You have two gondolas that go up. This is where the uh, 007 was actually shot. And this is also actually very high up. This is at 3000 meters or, or just about it. In terms of the activities, you have a really cool James Bond museum uh, up there. You can go out, you can even walk uh, around and have some, uh, some other kind of activities to read about. And you have a beautiful view actually, even on some lakes that you can't see in other people peaks in the, in the region or you can see from uh, from the Jungfrau here. And this doesn't stop here in terms of the activities. You have an intermediary station, Berg, where you have a thrill walk, where this is a little bit like the cliff walk. You walk along a cliff, but then you have some places where you can even actually like walk or it's very secure. But uh, to be 007. Exactly. <laughs> and you have like just a, a drop. It's a pretty, uh, pretty fun activity as well. So this is another one in the region that could be fun to, uh, to consider activities. So this next section, if the reason you wanted to visit the Jungfraujoch was to get an amazing view of the Alps, we have two options that might be even better for you. The one that for me is underrated that I, I think, tell everyone in the consultations that I do is the Menlichen. This is part of the Berner Oberland Pass and the Jungfrau Travel Pass. And this one is really fun because it is basically in the middle of all these beautiful villages. You can see Grindelwald, Wengen, Lauterbrunnen. Uh, you can see all of these different villages, even Muren. And you still have, you, you have a little hike and you have a view really of lakes. You have a view of everything there. Even as a, just a one-off, if you're not going to take a pass, but you're going to just take a, a round trip ticket, this is, if you have a half fare card, this is 26 francs. So super underrated, but beautiful view. You have the views on the glaciers. Also when you take the, the gondola and you have the views of the, uh, of the Jungfrau as well. For me, I, I would consider this like uh, really if you are a little bit more on the budget or if you just like to be away from the crowds of the Jungfrau Joch, this is the one I would recommend. Then the other one for the views is beautiful is the Brienza Roton. This is on Lake Brienz. You take a cogwheel train from Brienz and then you are on the top. You are going to see the beautiful Lake Brienz. If it is sunny, the color will be amazing. You have some ridge hikes also that you can take. This is in the region. This is included in the Berner Oberland Pass. I think this is always my favorite pond pass and even more now that you don't have the top of your pass and so this is another one that I would consider. So our last section for you is mm -hmm. particularly if you're just so turned off by the price you want to have the most affordable experience possible you want to maximize these travel passes and you don't want to pay anything extra and you're just getting the Swiss travel pass we have a few options for you that are included just within that. Yeah so this is not in the Interlaken region this is more around Lucerne but to amazing mountains actually that are available within the Swiss Travel Pass so you will not have to pay nothing else than your Swiss Travel Pass ticket. One is the 
uh, really cool. This is a beautiful peak. It's the queen of the mountains, it's, uh, it's called. And you can get there from Lucerne, taking um, a boat and then a cogwheel train, a funicular, that will be both the boat and the, the cogwheel train will be included. You'll have a beautiful view, you can walk around. And uh, and so this is one peak that is uh, that is nice. The other one is the Stanzehorn, which is also close to Lucerne. You can do it as a day trip from Lucerne, definitely. And you have uh, a cool gondola, you can even be outside of the gondola and you have also an amazing view on the Alps and, uh, and different mountains around. So these are two peaks that I think I would uh, definitely recommend regardless of price or not, but it costs nothing else than uh, the Swiss Trial Pass. And I'll give you a bonus tip about these two. If you want to be where Swiss people are and you want to be mm -hmm. a little bit away from tourists are, I think these will be yeah, the Rigi, definitely. two yeah. options that are the, the best. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you still really would like to visit the Jungfraujoch top of Europe, but more importantly, you can still afford to pay that additional fee to visit the Jungfraujoch top of Europe. You will have an amazing time if the weather yeah. is nice. There's so much to experience there. We've done it personally ourselves and we really did enjoy it. But I want to flag this because I think for a lot of different people, Switzerland, I know, is a lot of those once in a lifetime trips where you're saving so much money. And I think keep adding $200 mm. train tickets just to get to one peak, I think for is 10 minutes. becoming <laughs> increasingly di more difficult to justify. And, and that's feedback we're getting directly from you. So I hope you found some mm -hmm. alternatives that are just as amazing. I don't want any of you to think yeah. that it's a lesser experience. And I think Louie and I actually prefer a lot of these. There's so many amazing things to see in Switzerland and the region surrounding. You really can't go wrong. So if the Jungfrau Jacht top of Europe is not in the cards for you in this trip, really don't be discouraged. You will have just as nice of a time. Oh, yeah. in any of these options we listed. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have made it this far, as we mentioned in the beginning of the video, we offer one-on-one -on -one consultations or Louis offers one-on-one -on -one <laughs> consultations. You'll get more value from him than I think you will. I've traveled my whole life me. in Switzerland, so yeah. So we offer 45 minute one-on-one -on -one consultations with Louis at our website, which I have linked here. Additionally, we are offering itineraries for all of you. They are 20 US dollars and you can buy one of those six different itineraries we currently have and mm -hmm. we keep adding more. All of these are about a week along in different places in Switzerland. And our goal of this was to be as detailed and literal as possible. Louis included in exact train times, yeah. platforms you need to go to. So all the stress and the anxiety okay. is just on us. Let us handle <laughs> it for you. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that button and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.